Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So imagine that we had a re weekend retreat at the church here. And it was out in some desolate place, you know, maybe a, an hour or two from here. And so we all get there, and we have a, a special speaker. Uh, and it's time to eat. And somebody had gone by flying fish and gotten two whole fish and five pieces of cornbread. And then somehow the word had spread about the speaker, our special speaker who was going to be there. And so 20,000 people showed up, but we had no other food. And then, of course, you know the rest of the story. We blessed the food and divided it, and it went to everybody, and everybody got fed. So that's, that's what this miracle is. And we, as we read, and it's in all four Gospels, as we read this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, um, you know, we, we kind of get used to hearing it. Uh, but it really, truly was one of the great miracles that Jesus did. And so the gospel says that he was going out to a desolate place to pray on his own. It says, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place. So he didn't just walk there. He went by boat, and it was a deserted place. He went by himself. But somehow the multitude heard of it, and they all came. And so... It's the feeding of the 5,000. So why did I say 20,000? Well, it's because it says, besides the women and the children. So others, not me, have estimated that it probably was around 20,000. So it was a huge crowd. And, um, and it said he had compassion on them and he healed the sick. And so he responded to the moment. I'm sure he knew it was gonna happen. Uh, but so all of these people came and Maybe this was the first mega church. So 20,000 people. So, so they all came and he had compassion on them. And, and then of course it was getting toward evening and there they were out in this deserted place and, and had no food except for the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And, and so he said, well, bring them to me. And he blessed them and had the disciples distribute them and of course, uh, it fed everybody. And not only that, but they had a lot left over as well. A bunch of baskets uh, left over that, that they uh, could save and either maybe give to the people to take home or what have you. And th these were people who, who weren't just local because the, the disciples were saying, you know, send them into the cities to buy food. So obviously it wasn't just to go back to their home to what they were recommending. So these people had come from all over and were following Christ. And, and we only get a, a, a little bit of the picture uh, of what his ministry was. And clearly that wasn't the only situation uh, where thousands and thousands were there and he taught them. Well, there are many things that this passage teaches us. Uh, it's why we read it um, um, on a regular basis. Uh, but I'm only going to touch on a few. I do want to mention that um, it does show, as happened in other times, that, that Jesus thanked the Father. He blessed the bread. He blessed the food. And he, he thanked the Father. And that is a strong example for us uh, to consistently thank God for what he has given us, both at meals, but also at other times as well. And then we also see that the, the people went to the deserted place where Christ was. And so you can kind of turn that around and, and say, when we're in a deserted place, then Christ comes to us. A deserted place emotionally, spiritually, physically, you, that Christ is there with us and he comes to us. And, and then another uh, brief example is that, or teaching, is that he heals us as he did the people there. And he feeds us, of course. He provides for us. So I want to talk about a couple more specific uh, lessons from this passage. 
And one is that, that we must give what we have in hospitality and good works to others. And what little we have, and it may seem like very little when we're giving it, what little we have will be multiplied. And it's because God's storehouse is inexhaustible. So whenever we give alms, it may be a little, it may be a lot, but it may be a little. And when we give it, then trust God that it will be multiplied to meet the needs of those who are in need. When we provide hospitality to others, bring somebody into our home, or hospitality even in the church, that God will provide and he'll multiply. It, it amazes me how often when we have a feast of the church and we're all eating together, that it's rare that we don't have a whole lot left over. And uh, thank God. But God multiplies it. When we, when we give our tithes, and then any other offering to the church, it's multiplied. When we donate to other things, when we contribute to help others, uh, when we feed the needy, when we serve others, all of that is multiplied. And we have to trust God that He is doing that, even though we may not see at all the result of what we are doing. Secondly, the fathers have always understood that this passage is Eucharistic. It parallels the Last Supper in John 6, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And so this feeding of the 20,000, the 5,000, uh, is also uh, a picture to us, a statement to us about Christ's body and blood being the bread of life. So as Jesus distributes this bread and fish to his disciples, so too the body and blood of Christ is distributed to you through the descendants of the apostles, the bishops, the priests, the deacons. So as we serve you the Eucharist, it's not us serving you, but it's actually Christ and the apostles serving you. So when we serve you, we're giving you a fairly small piece of bread. Sometimes it's bigger than, than you may be able to handle, actually. <laughs> but it's a small amount of bread and wine. And yet, we have to see that that is the fullness of the body and blood of Christ. It is multiplied to us. It's multiplied in us as we partake of it by faith. And so don't view it as just a small particle and a small... Uh, piece of wine. View it as, as, if nothing else, as a whole loaf and a whole uh, chalice of wine. Uh, but certainly spiritually, God is providing for us and, and nourishing us through the Eucharist uh, for our spiritual benefit of both soul and body. So we are healed and we receive spiritual sus sustenance through the body and blood of Christ, just as the thousands were fed in today's gospel out in that desolate place. So today, may we remember this great miracle of Christ. It's so familiar to us and yet has so many lessons for us to learn. And may we remember to provide hospitality, good works, alms to others. And what little we give is multiplied by Christ. And it's not up to us to, to decide how much it should be, but God will lead us how much to give, and then he will multiply it. And then we are healed and receive forgiveness of sins and spiritual, spiritual sustenance as we partake of the bread of life, as we partake of the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.